Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, here, I'm going to be discussing a few things. As you notice, I'm working this time in my sketchbook uh, using traditional methods. I thought it would be important to show some of this uh, so that you see that I'm not just doing it all digital and some of you guys out there that are watching these videos don't have to feel like you have to go out and get a tablet to do the stuff that we're doing or that I'm doing on here. This is how I started. This is how I did it for years, for decades even. All the way back in 10th grade algebra. I wasn't paying attention. And instead, I was drawing. So anyway, here what I'm working on is just kind of letting the, the thought process, the creative process take over. I didn't start with any idea. If you notice, the page was blank. It start, That's how it starts. That's how it always starts, no matter what, whether the, the screen is blank or the page is blank. Either way. Sometimes I have a spark of inspiration for, for this certain image I want to do. Sometimes I don't. In this case, I did not. I just kind of started letting the pencil take over and just kind of see what happened. Uh, you're going to notice here he had arms for a second there and now he doesn't. And that's the way the creative process works for me. I, I try different things as I'm going along. Some work, some don't. And that's just the way it goes. Which leads me to the point of telling you folks, don't be afraid to erase. Don't be afraid to, to experiment. This is the point in time to try that uh, in your sketchbook because your sketchbook is like, like a diary almost. You, know? you don't have to show everything you have in your sketchbook to anybody. That's for you. Of course, you're, you're more than welcome to show it if you want, if you're proud of it or, or you think you, know, you want some feedback on certain things, of course. But for the most part, my sketchbook, it's full of stuff that will never see the light of day. People will, won't see it. I don't show it to anybody, not even my family. It's just stuff that I have in there, and, and that's just the way it is. So yeah, fill up your sketchbook. Just sit down with it and just work on it. Just do something. Sooner or later, your, your mind will stop thinking of all the different stuff that's going on in your life and your worries and your stress or, or whatever you have going on, and let the creative process take over and just, just check out for a few minutes and lay down some lines and see what you get. You might be surprised. Let me talk a bit about the, the, the going into, into the creative process. For me, at least, sometimes it feels like time just seems to not exist. Almost like when you read a good book, you lose track of time. Or when you're watching a good movie, you lose track of time. Your mind stops, to, stops working on that, that reality level, I guess you could say and starts operating on a more creative level and just kind of just relaxes. For me, anyway, when I draw and I get into the zone, which is what happened here, I got into the zone for a minute there and then creative things just started happening and I liked where it was going. I just kept rolling with it. It releases endorphins. I feel good when I come out of the drawing phase or when I'm in the drawing phase even. I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging sometimes that, that, hey, I'm doing this. You know, and I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. And that's what I do. I just keep going and, and see where it goes. And over time, I've learned to kind of corral it a little bit or wrangle it in some and kind of keep it in check somewhat and still maintain my 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 logical mind and, and saying, OK, well, I want it to look like this. I want this to do this and so forth and so on. And at the same time, it, it you know, I do let go a bit and let the creative process just work. And that's that's a wonderful place to be here on screen what you're going to see is i'm checking to see if i'm getting any bleed through because i'm about to uh, use this marker to darken in the areas and what i've done is i put a piece of cardstock behind this sheet so that if i do get bleed through which i most likely will it's not going to go through to the next page and ruin the next page on my on uh, my sketchbook i don't know if that's a tip or advice or or, or sketchbook hack but it's something that i do I learned over time and ruining a lot of sketchbooks and a lot of pages that that's just easier for me to do it. It is important that you have the, the paper behind this one. If you use one, make sure it's flat. Don't grab one out of the trash that, that you had just previously crumpled up and whatnot, because you're not going to get those crumpled out and it's going to show up on this side when you're trying to draw and you're going to get the little bumps and, and dips and so forth. So make sure it's a, it's a fresh piece of, uh, cardstock or, or heavy thick paper. 
Now what I'm doing is just kind of laying in some shadows here and there, some reflections that I'm going to work with in a little while. Gave them some, some eyeballs. What you see there is the uh, white gel pen. You'll see me work a lot with that uh, when I'm doing traditional stuff for highlights and for um, spots like, like the eyes there, you know. Uh, I'm starting to lay down a little bit of color. And again, I'm using that sketch, that uh, piece of paper back there as a test. I haven't used Copics or any markers in quite some time. So I kind of forgot what some of these colors look like once I lay them down because sometimes they don't look exactly like they do on the cap, especially after they dry. These are alcohol-based markers. So when you lay it down, it's more vibrant than, say, the next day or, hell, even the next hour. Sometimes they dull out a little bit, or sometimes they just change the tone altogether. You'll start out with a cool tone, you end up with, with a warmer tone for whatever reason. Uh, and that's just, you learn what your tools are the more you work with your tools. So it's important just to get out there and just start working in your sketchbook and just figuring out what is what and what, what this does and what that does and what it's going to do and so forth and so on. And when you mix it together with another color and this, that. So you see here, there's a, there's a lull in the, in the action, so to speak, because I'm trying to figure out where I want to go with this now. I've laid down preliminary colors. I've got an idea. I'm feeling it. But I, I do think I need to darken up some certain areas to give it a more uh, rounded look, a more dimensional look. And that's what I'm going to do with this colored pencil. Another trick is that I lay down the colored pencil lightly, and then I go over that area with the marker. It can be a dark marker, it can be the same color that you were using already previously. It, all it's doing is just blending that colored pencil into the into that area more. I find that it gives me a better blend. Then here I'll go back in with with a lighter shade of the of the same color, but well, what I'm trying to do is just even out the tones or even out the the gradient, and again give it some dimension. I'm not worried about being too precise because this is just my sketchbook. Uh, if at a later point in time I want to do something with this, I'll go back in and I'll either trace it or I'll take a picture of it and drop it into my uh, digital pad and, and go from there. And Something like this, I could maybe see doing decals. In which case, like I said, I would just drop it into my, my uh, tab A and retrace it, basically redraw it, but just using the uh, digital method to get cleaner lines and uh, have more control over the size ratios and that kind of thing. Here I am just adding shadows, adding dimension again to the, the overall look of the skull. I'm going to end up keeping the background on this extremely simple because I don't want the background to be focused. I want the background just to be something to make the image pop off the page, which you'll see here in a little while. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a color that's going to recede in a sense away from the warmer tones that I've used here. If you notice it's a lot of yellows, oranges, even the pink, even some of the grays that I'm using is a warmer tone gray. So I'm going to end up going with a, uh, a cool color in the back again, just to recede and make that, that pencil image pop off the page a little more, a little more towards the viewer. If you see anything on here that you have questions about, just Put a comment down there, uh, let me know, and I'll respond. I'm trying to keep all the comments pertaining to each video here. I've noticed a few people go, will go back to my other social media and ask me questions or say comments on there, which is perfectly fine, of course. I mean, I'll, I'll answer those as well, too, but I'd like to try to keep everything in the same video so that I know what it was that I was talking about, and I can go back to that video and look at it, and this, that, and the other. It also helps me on my on my views and helps me uh, show other people that, yeah, I'm here, I'm a real person, I'm actually talking to you. This is that background I was talking about, how it's, it's a blue color, it's uh, still vibrant enough though that it, it complements the image. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Um, here you can find me on Instagram, uh, Lenardist Illustration. And uh, once again, thank you so much.